All right, welcome folks, Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. Happy New Year. I hope uh, you guys are uh, enjoying the, uh, the downtime. It is a little slow in terms of the SITREP uh, air traffic, but uh, we got a lot to cover. Gonna recap a couple of things because I think they're important. Uh, but uh, this is gonna be our first SITREP. It is Monday, high noon uh, on January 3rd, 2022, and coming to you uh, from the great state of Texas. And so without further ado, let's hop over the board. We're going to kick it off with a little sky glass today. And um, you guys can see uh, we're showing about 79 up on the board right now. If we get into a couple little things, I'm going to clear the board and then just go into the aircraft that we want to really be looking at. Now, this uh, B703s, for some reason, are not, not wanting to show here. So let me see where they are located. Okay, so in Europe... Looks like we've got a little B-703 activity up here in Europe. This is the Black Sea here, Ukraine, Belarus up here. And then this is over, uh, this is actually over Israel. And so you can see uh, two 703s over Israel. Now, uh, they look to be just getting airborne. And uh, that is kind of an interesting data point. Don't see those very often, really. Uh, and these look to be, uh, and those, those are actually 707-300s is what they are, but they call them B-703s, uh, but just so you know. Uh, and then let's get over to, uh, let me back out of that, uh, and then we're going to hop in and see if we've got um, heavy movers uh, wise. Uh, they got some, up, about two in the UK. Uh, let me get over here to the US. Looks like we got one off of California coast, and then uh, one in central, just north of Oklahoma. Uh, one here in, a, in the Kentucky region, and then two up here in the Northeast. Kind of a quiet day, like I said. Only about 79 uh, aircraft, 80 aircraft up, which is pretty low. Uh, when you see the weather moving across the Northeast here in a second, you'll see why. Uh, we do have two E6s up, so let me take these off our screen. Let's take a look. These are uh, airborne command centers. Uh, as you can see, one of them looks to be, let me pull this down here. Uh, one of them is off of that San Francisco area, uh, which has kind of been a, a normal lately. We've getting them kind of both coasts, east and west coast. So we've got one, Stacy 17, off of there. And then we've got one, it looks like he just popped up out of Oklahoma. And uh, we'll keep our eye on those guys and see. But uh, you kind of expect that. And I do know that uh, we have a, um, let's see, Skywatch is up, but I'm not seeing it on our board here. So air refueler wise, still got the same stuff off the East Coast. Uh, let me turn that one off. Let me back out of this. We'll get to our flat map. As you can see, uh, this right here is going to be, uh, that's going to be your night watch. And uh, he usually flies at uh, today's call sign Spice 98. You'll see him up as uh, Club 44 and, and a couple other little things. But uh, this is the plane we're talking about. It looks a lot like Air Force One, all right? Uh, over the center U.S., couple little uh, heavies, so Reach here and uh, C-130 here. We just looked at those. Uh, there's our E-6. Actually looks a little further south than what we're showing on our map. Looks to be headed down towards the Los Angeles area, but took off out of San Francisco. And let me see, handful of trainers sprinkled in there. And nothing really, not too much off of Florida. It looks like a lot of our stuff in Florida has kind of subsided. Now, we'll want to look at these. These could be our Cougars coming back into play. These could also be um, our Dornier uh, 328s. Uh, they show that as an icon for the flight, but I don't think it's those aircraft. Those uh, airspeed 343, 345 um, is not, um, and the altitude 23,000. It's kind of low and it's slow for being uh, a Learjet or a Gulfstream. Uh, so those might be the little Dornier's um, spec ops birds coming out of the panhandle here. That's where they kind of operate out of. So we'll see where they go. And uh, again, northeast, uh, we do have a little cluster. Look, check this out. Don't see that very often. Uh, these are a bunch of H-60s. And uh, those are actually, look like they're, they are flying in a little formation. Now that's probably, if you're in that general area, this is Pittsburgh here, West Virginia down here, headed towards Charleston. Uh, and and uh, Huntington. Um, so if you're in that general area and you see those flying over, that's probably going to get your attention. Uh, they are at about 6,000 feet, which is not very high. But notice the formation on these. You got two side by side, and then almost like a spear. Uh, 
you know, two in the front, two in the back, two side by side. That is uh, kind of an interesting formation. Uh, I don't know the significance of that, um, but uh, the spread on those is, is a pretty good little gap in coverage. So um, interesting though. So they are rolling out. Like I said, that's the first time I've ever seen that. Uh, it kind of intrigues me. So I'll keep an eye on that and see if anything transpires, but uh, you don't normally see that at all, okay? All right, let's get over here to the weather map real fast before we get into Flashbang because uh, he's really not doing much today, but going back, uh, you can see these blue boxes and the red boxes are power outages. And so you can see this storm that's rolling through has basically whacked the area pretty hard on the power side. So uh, if you're near that, in that region, you probably are you know, getting uh, spotty power at best. Out here on the West Coast, we got this uh, behemoth coming inbound again. Uh, and those, those that are curious, Harp is up in here. Uh, so uh, I don't know if this is related, but man, the storms that are coming through seem to be insanely strong, like uh, 100 plus mile an hour winds hitting the coast. I don't ever recall it being that crazy. Uh, but you can see power outages starting to come online. Now that'll be across here in the middle uh, U.S. In, in a couple days and then on out to the East Coast again. But uh, uh, we just seem to get whacked one after the other. So, all right, so there's that. Uh, we do have a space operations TFR in play, uh, the normal border stuff here. Uh, this one is probably around Fort Hood. And that seems to be new. And that's G.W. Bush up north. I get asked that one a lot. Uh, no significance to it. He, because his uh, uh, Desert Storm thing, weapons of mass destruction, and the 9-11 deal, uh, for some reason, he's the only president that actually has a TFR over him other than an active um, president up in D.C. So nobody else gets those. He's had that there. It's been permanent since, you know, he was in office. So that's been a while. That's been a minute, 20 years probably. So uh, still have our normal one over the Senior Living Center. And I do see a little tiny one up here in the Boston area. I'm not really sure it's hazards. Explosive device cleanup. It seems to be, have been there for a while. So, okay, let's back out of this. Let's get over here to the volcanic uh, activity. That would not be volcanic. Um, this would be volcanic. And it looks like we've got uh, one still popping out here in Japan, one up here in Russia. And then we've got five right here between uh, South and Central um, America. So. Uh, that's kind of the usual, uh, kind of seeing that pretty regularly now. So, all right, here's flashbang schedule. Now you can see he's supposed to be rolling out at 855 this morning to, uh, Newcastle or out of Newcastle back to, uh, the Brown zone senior living center. And, uh, I think he was delayed because of a blizzard conditions. So he's kind of sitting tight. Uh, but I do want to watch, just, uh, point this out. He's virtually meeting with families and independent farmers and ranchers to discuss his uh, administration's work to boost the competition. Uh, yeah, uh, just hang on to your wallets because anything this guy touches goes to complete crap. So I would say just uh, watch the, the pricing from here on out. We're probably gonna see uh, meat prices go through the roof in the coming weeks just because, uh, like I said, this guy is like uh, the angel of death when it comes to economic policy. All right, hey, let's get over here to marine traffic. Speaking of uh, build back broken, um, this is the Los Angeles port. We can see there's a little bit of movement uh, around it. You can see the congestion is still pretty heavy here for a Monday. One thing I want to point out though, uh, I was actually talking to uh, my buddy James and, and Tom over the weekend and we were talking about these ships, these cargo ships. And I went over and I looked at China at their ports, and if you think our stuff is backed up, wait till you see the stuff out here in Japan and along the coastline here. This is absolutely insane, the amount of ship movements. Look at the congestion of cargo containers as you run along. This is Taiwan, uh, but you get into the ports there, and it, ours pale in comparison. So if you think we're having problems in the US, of course, most of these are probably empty coming back, but keep in mind, it takes China about 30 days to load one of the big cargo ships. And so uh, if, you're, if it's taking you 70 plus days to get cargo containers back empty from the west coast of, of the US, um, they got a serious logistics problem going on here. I mean, this is, uh, this, look at this port right here. 
this is absolutely insane, uh, the amount of movement and congestion that's in here. And it's, it's just, it's like this all the way up the coast. It's absolutely crazy. Look at this one here. This is crazy. Now these little ones are, um, are parked. I don't know why they're gray unless they don't have the power on. And so they're just sitting. So it's almost like a ghost, ghost uh, town out there. Uh, but you get up here, of course, this is Taiwan. Look at, uh, look at all the, the, the boats around there. Uh, it really does pale. Uh, I mean, our, our problem looks like it's nothing compared to this. And then you get up here. This is it's absolutely crazy. So, all right, let's break away from the boats. Uh, let's get over here. NASA is not flying right now. It looks like their stuff is still all grounded. So we'll keep our eye on this one. I like uh, kind of watching what they are up to. And uh, we get over here to the misery map. Now, I've been watching Newsmax and those report about uh, thousands and thousands of flights being canceled. Maybe the aggregate is, is, uh, is a thousand plus, uh, but I will tell you, it doesn't look that bad. Um, the red uh, are going to be the cancels, the, or sorry, the, the uh, delays and cancels. So if you get over here, New York, you've got this weather system moving through blizzard conditions. Yeah, you're going to have some, some cancellations and, and delays. You can see DC is getting walloped right now, that big red right there. Uh, is basically, uh, that's DC, but total delays, almost 700. Cancellations for today, 312. Uh, if you go back, you can see it's, it's, uh, it's about average, you know, throughout as the storm has moved through and you can see it uh, kind of fluctuating as they go through it, but that's the storm. And of course you expect it as the storm goes through to see the reds increase. I mean, it's just common sense stuff, right? All right, let's get out of the misery map real fast. Let's get over here to communist China. Now, when we last got together uh, last year, um, we were talking about China and how they are making a move in the Caribbean. And so I want to go into a little more detail on this because I think it's something we need to pay close attention to. They've just signed a deal or inked a deal with Cuba. And uh, if you know, uh, back from the, the days of the Cuban Missile Crisis and, and the Bay of Pigs and all the other stuff that took place back then, Cuba is only about 90 miles from the coast of Florida. And so that is a very close presence. And when you get warships in there, especially if they have nukes or you get a submarine in there, uh, that is a pretty big threat, right? And that's what sparked the Cuban Missile Crisis was the Soviet Union actually came in there with missiles. Uh, and we're basically setting up shop in Cuba, which is right off our coast, okay? So that's why this is a big concern. Now, I wanna pop over here and just show you, there's a little history behind this. You go back a year and um, they had an article that came out talking about China was been, has been suspected of spying on the Americans via the Caribbean phone networks, okay? And so uh, they're setting up shop there, there's a reason for it. So they're listening to us and uh, keep in mind too, the distance between that area and where Trump is uh, in Mar-a-Lago is a big concern. And so that would have been one of those deals uh, where probably listening to him, to be honest with you. So, okay, so let's get over here. Um, this is actually uh, the Foreign Affairs Committee uh, and it's on the, the right, uh, the Republican side. We're gonna look at this a little closer, but I just wanna paint the picture of what's going on down here in the Caribbean and why we should all be paying close attention. Now notice we were watching a lot of flights and refuelers down over Florida, uh, and that's because of the whole Cuba thing going on with China, or we, at least we believe that was. And so if you get into the weeds on this, you can see, uh, let me get in, uh, just show you, this is China and the deal that took shape in the Bahamas. Uh, China backed the company developing $3 billion worth of deep water containment port in the Grand Bahama Isle, uh, Island, 55 miles off the coast of the U.S. Uh, that's up here, and we'll take a closer look at that in just a second. Uh, that's one of the deals. Now, if you get over here, this is the deal they did with Cuba. In 2019, an affiliate of the Chinese oil company, Great Wall Drilling, began drilling off the Cuba's coast in a joint partnership uh, with Cuba. Um, they are also pumping in uh, a lot of money and helping them build a lot of stuff relative to their major resorts, luxury hotels, and golf courses down there in Cuba as well. So they're kind of setting up shop, as you guys can tell. And then, of course, over here in Jamaica, um, uh, they were granted, uh, actually the government of Jamaica just granted China 
uh, Harbor Engineering Company a 50-year lease on roughly 1,200 acres of prime real estate to pay for $700 million highway connecting Jamaica uh, north and south coast. Now, that's important because that's almost what they did in Cuba, right? It's that whole um, silk and belt or whatever road thing that they have going on, okay? So that's Jamaica. And then in the Dominican Republic, they basically grease the skids, $600 million loan to expand the country's electrical grid. And then a $3.1 billion package of investments and loans from China. So they're pumping into the economy there in the Dominican Republic, pretty hot and heavy. Uh, and so that means they are starting to set up shop in here, which means there's going to be a very close and real threat right here because that is, like I said, 90 miles from Cuba uh, to, I want to say, uh, the Keys or something, right? So it's a pretty close shot. And then this one here right off the coast is not far at all. If you get out here and look at the actual map, uh, this is the North Abaco port that was built. Uh, I don't know how old this picture is right here, but uh, it says uh, imagery date 91119. Uh, but if you'll notice, nothing there. It's wiped clean, right? No ships in there, nothing there. Uh, I don't know if that's because the storm came through and they basically just wiped it out. But uh, to give you a general idea, as we back this up a little bit, you can see uh, that is not far at all um, from uh, this is uh, West Palm is where uh, Trump right there in Mar-a-Lago uh, to there. It's a pretty close, pretty close shot. All right. So they are getting very close in the region. OK, so move on from that. But that, uh, I believe, is why we have uh, increased presence down there that we're starting to see. Uh, obviously, they have some concerns. And I would say that's probably um, <laughs> warranted, all right? All right, so this is actually going to be our sniffer helo out in Vegas, uh, 411 DE. 412 didn't fly. Uh, 411 did in Vegas on New Year's Eve. And you can see them running a couple little routes and then this area along the strip. So they were, they were certainly looking and sniffing for, uh, you know, the potential of a nuclear or biological or chemical device uh, just outside of Nellis. So... Um, there it was that. All right, now let's get over here to immigration. Just a quick note. Uh, I'm starting to see a lot more uh, troops moving in and out of this airport location. So it uh, makes it a little difficult, uh, but I do know the Omni stuff is, is typically troops, as are the Camber flights. Um, you'll see this one that departed the Camber flight. Now, if I click on that, it's not going to give you an end destination. It's just going to say uh, it is actually... Uh, well, actually, it looks like it's headed to, to Baltimore. Let me just double check here. I want to see if it if it gives us that. Okay, it went from Bliss to Baltimore. So that was probably an empty flight. More than likely didn't have any troops on it. But if it did, uh, that is kind of a, a rare one. You normally don't see, uh, here you go. You can see it actually took off here. Um, and it uh, it's, it's actually headed out to Europe. And so... Uh, but again, that's troop stuff, and it's currently en route, so I'm going to back away from that. Um, but yeah, so with everything going on with the Ukraine, uh, we'll segue into that here in a minute. That could be what we're seeing, but those camber flights are going to be troop movements, uh, as are these Omni flights. So when you see these OAE flights, uh, just know those are troops. We're not going to focus on them. I'm not seeing a lot of poppy movement or anything right now, which could indicate um, that uh, we don't have a lot left there. Uh, we do have this Eastern Airline flight coming in from Miami. Uh, we'll see where that goes. Uh, if that is the case, that could actually be some poppy movement, okay? All right. And then UPS. I'm not too concerned about the UPS stuff, all right? Uh, get over to Holloman. Uh, not really a lot going on at Holloman, although I do know New Mexico has a ton of uh, camp set up for uh, the poppies that came over. Uh, the question really is, have they been dispositioned and put into our communities already? Are the camps empty? That's the million dollar question. Um, but this one here, this is a life flight that popped in, uh, uh, air methods. And so we'll uh, continue to watch that and see uh, if anything else happens out there. All right, over here to Swift Air. So you guys can see this is the board. Um, we do have some return flights coming back from Port-au-Prince that took place earlier this morning headed into San Antonio, but you'll notice we still have one that is a, um, a Laredo to um, Port-au-Prince, all right? So that would indicate we've got uh, some uh, people being returned, 
All right. So some Haitians coming back out, probably across the border and being deported. Uh, the rest of these, I'm not really sure what's going on, but I will tell you, if you look at a lot of these flights and then you bounce them off of our uh, immigration detention camp locations, um, you've got detention, detention facilities in the yellow. Uh, and that's the GEO group, by the way. Uh, you want to research them. They run a lot of our prisons independently, uh, which is interesting. Uh, the blues are going to be foster care stuff. The reds are going to be military bases. Again, yellows are detention centers. So when you look at these flights and you look at this, you can kind of see um, there is quite a bit of movement going on. Okay. All right. Now let's bump over here. That was Biggs. So we looked at Holloman. Uh, we're looking at the live arrow. Now here's one I do want to just point out. Now this, I actually saw an article written up about uh, on Gateway Pundit. And I uh, just want to point out, I've done some research on this particular airline. They're just like Swift Air. They do a lot of, um, a lot of work um, with our government um, prison facilities, the BOP, uh, the air marshals, things like that, uh, U.S. Marshal Service. Uh, a lot of these flights that we see, uh, this one's going, actually coming back out of uh, Central America up to McAllen. Uh, that was probably a flight bringing people out of the country and then came back empty. Uh, as you go in, this is the actual tail number here, uh, N806WA. We'll keep our eye on it. Uh, they do have a lot of activity, uh, but you're going to notice there's, there's a lot of flights that are popping back and forth. Um, when I've looked at this flight in the past, uh, it connected me to U.S. Marshal Service. So that tells me that these are folks being actually ex exported not imported, all right, for the most part. But they are pretty busy, uh, very busy. You can see how frequent that is. Uh, but notice the flights, Laredo, Port-au-Prince. They're not bringing folks in. They're taking them out uh, for the most part, okay? All right. Now, over here to, to uh, Guantanamo Bay, it is actually very quiet this week. We get into the board, look at arrivals. Last thing we had was United Airlines flight coming in from Jacksonville. That was last Thursday. Uh, if we get over to the, the court calendar, you can see everything's been canceled this week. And it uh, looks like we've got uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed coming up here in, uh, I had to practice that by the way. <laughs> I had to say it like nine times just to get it in my head so I didn't uh, totally spoof it. But uh, anyway, it uh, looks like his, his uh, motions of hearing is coming up uh, next week on the 10th, okay? All right, now let's get over here real fast to the Ukraine just so you guys are well versed to what's going on in the world. Uh, it looks like Biden is now saying that the U.S. will respond de decisively if Russia invades Ukraine. Uh, I would say it's probably dealt with sanctions. I'm not really, uh, don't have a lot of confidence in him doing anything. I think NATO would probably be the main response. Uh, but we'll see what happens, all right? But this is uh, Putin's. Uh, now, I think that shot was probably taken back when he was VP. Uh, I just can't see. He looks a little young there. He's got, uh, he's still got Hunter on the uh, the desktop here on the front in the pictures, uh, but he does look a little younger. He got a little more hair. That's probably an old photo, if I had to guess. Um, although it says, uh, you know, he's talking to Putin on his phone from Delaware. Just doesn't look like the same guy. He looks a little younger there. So, uh, but anyway. Uh, Putin basically has warned Biden against any sanctions over the Ukraine, and I would imagine uh, that's the guy you probably want to be listening to. I, I do think he has his eyes set on these folks and that he's going to be probably making a move here pretty quickly. So, uh, well, isn't that interesting? So the, the, uh, the, there it is. All right. We'll, we'll continue to watch this. If anything develops out of that or it looks like something going down, I will uh, repost and, and bring out some data. Uh, if you guys want to watch it over on your apps, uh, knock it out. It's uh, uh, tail numbers right up here, and they look to be active right now, headed across West Virginia. So uh, who knows what that could be? I mean, that really could be anything, uh, depending on who's really behind it. Um, could be a little bit of uh, some dagger going on. Uh, could be uh, transporting somebody um, that may be a high value, just coming out of a, a you know, a uh, conviction and maybe putting them into a new location. There's no telling, uh, but uh, don't, like I said, I don't see that very often. So, all right, well, listen, that is going to be it for our uh, sit rep today. I'll be back on Wednesday and uh, you guys just uh, stay safe. Keep your powder dry. I think it's going to be a very interesting year to say the least. Stay safe. God bless. Monkey out.
Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.